so we have a really exciting show today. I think that you're know, setting this up as what is the world that you're trying to build and helping you map it out. And so using uh, our special authors today, Eric and Quinn, we like to find out how they built their world to help you guys build your world. I think that that's our show today. So let's let's get into it. What how how did you start thinking about your world building for the Penny Morris? So I think I think part of it was I started to ask questions about kind of what they wanted. And so I think I asked like what do you want the characters to be? And I think it was Quinn and Parker. You guys said that no, you wanted it was my it was my idea that I wanted it to be of us. Yeah, of us. So she wanted to be them. And then I asked what kind of characters they want to be, and she, they wanted to be princesses. That was immediately it right away. So royal story, kind of a fantasy story, and they wanted magic. So magic. lots of magic. lots of magic. So I think that was kind of it. We just started with a bunch of questions like that, and then like you know what kind of things are magical, and I think that they wanted uh, talking animals at some point, dwarves. I wanted talking animals, and I think Parker wanted dwarves. Yeah. And Parker wanted fairies, but we said no. <laughs> <laughs> no <Right>. fairies <laughs> and Avon wanted howling right that that's was right well it. and they they also they wanted um i think they wanted unicorn my little ponies they were really into and i said we can't like mimic my little ponies so we put that for a later book behind it so we made some choices of what to include and kind of what not to include nice sounds like a really cool world and you know did you enjoy that process quinn like having a say in like how this world was made and you know being a part of it also that that sounds like a really cool Really cool uh, story. I liked it the best because if we really wanted to know what was going to happen next, Daddy would sometimes tell us. Yeah, so we kind of like in each and every sort of step, we'd ask a question like, oh, like what's the next thing you want to do? And so it was very much this like kind of, you know, iterative process where each night we would talk for 10, 15 minutes and then we would say, well, what do we want to talk about the next day? And so it was like, all right, well, let's let's have wolves. And so like that kind of process, like, and I think it's an interesting thing. <laughs> <laughs> like people oftentimes think that you have this whole entire thing and we kind of kept adding and adding and actually it wasn't until later that we realized the kind of the the magic in the Pennymore's world about not having writing being a big thing so you writing with quills happened a little bit later actually that is interesting you know it kind of reminds me of Dungeons and Dragons where you're like the dungeon master Eric and you're leading your daughters down this like journey that you've created that's right yeah, it was fun though. I think, and that's what I think was cool. So you kind of like, and that's what I think we'll do today with tonight's workshop a little bit is sort of like you kind of just like try things out and test things and like what analogies you like. So we were kind of, you know, reading several books and like things that they wanted to do. So kind of that's it. You want to sort of like be inspired by other stuff. We don't copy other things, but you're inspired by things to help you uh, along the way. Well, yeah. What were we inspired by? I think you were inspired by My Little Pony. No. Uh, no, not my little book. Definitely not my little book. <laughs> probably the one thing is probably the bottle errors. Yeah, the bottle errors. We were inspired by a lot mm -hmm. by them. And so that was like having siblings, right? Like in this idea. So Quinn was very inspired by that, which is a good one for us that helped us a lot too. Do you feel like Harry Potter was an inspiration also with like the magic? Like, I've never wand. read Harry Potter. We hadn't read Harry Potter. They had not read Harry Potter. Only I had. So it was also interesting too, because like I love Harry Potter and I would say things like, oh, this is kind of like Harry Potter. And they're like, Hmm? What? <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I see some people in the chat love Harry Potter. So you can you can build your world based off of Harry Potter. I think that that's another interesting thing is like what inspires you can be part of what your world ends up being. Yep, exactly, exactly. And that's what we're gonna do tonight. I think so one of the, the big things for all of you, and maybe this is, what are your favorite sort of like worlds out there? So it could be from movies or TVs or whatever it is. So I'll maybe start with that question a little bit. Like, Ethan, um, Quinn, like, what are your favorite places that you guys like worlds that you've seen out there? Uh, Ethan, you said last time you like you liked uh, Black Panther a lot. Is that a world mm -hmm. like kind of Wakanda, a world that you like? Yeah, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> yep, it's good. Um, yeah, that one in Game of Thrones. I think those are the two biggest like worlds that I I live in in my head. I like it. What about you, Quinn? Any kind of famous like sort of stories that you really like these days? Now that you've been reading more stuff. Oh, I do like um, I like Rainbow Magic. And Kanto, you like a lot now, right? Yes, I like the Kicks, and I think I like. Oh, Narnia! We just started Narnia. Actually, that's another yes, one starting house. Narn uh, yeah, Narnia's Narnia is a good one. And I like the Pennymores. <laughs> yes, that's good. 
<laughs> nice, nice plug there. Friend. Exactly. Nice plug on that one. So, so maybe let's, should we start Ethan? Like maybe start with the first yeah. part of it here. Oh, and my little pony books and, um, shot and I, um, like Coraline. Coraline's a good one too. Yeah. So we're going to start with that. Actually that prompt, here's the first prompt that we're going to do. So everyone should get out a pen and uh, something to write with. So we're going to go through hey, six. I know I got it for you. We're going to go through six little questions today. Uh, Quinn is actually going to be working through the brand, her brand new plume journal. I think that I saw Sophia and Rachel are on too, who got one. So the, their journals, they got some too. So we'll give a couple away tonight. Um, but uh, so pick out a piece of paper and we're going to go through six questions tonight to help you design a world. And so the first question is we want to figure out this, this statement. It's like blank, but so what we mean by that is you want to pick a world that you're inspired by. Like it's like Harry Potter, but you know, again, you write, you write magic instead of you cast magic or it's like game of Thrones, but the dragons are in charge as opposed to people or whatever that might be. Right. That's kind of, yeah, or yeah, that's good. Good. you got a different, you different, watch this one for now. Then. I don't know what the other ones are, but we'll use this one. There you go. So that's what we want to start with here is we want to start with that question. So uh, Ethan, why don't we start with you a little bit here with the question. Uh, what is your uh, kind of what what is that you talked about a few what are the most inspired places you are so write your first one here number one it's like blank but I feel like the it's like Game of Thrones would be interesting I don't know if I can write like George R. R. Martin though <laughs> um, but I'll just say it it's like Game of Thrones but the dragons are the you know the strongest creatures of the world cool so it's like Game of Thrones but uh, with dragons a little bit that way Quinn, what about you? So you, you're picking this one. You decided you had a kind of inspirational that we were talking about today. You were inspired by what movie? Um, Moana. Moana. So Quinn was going to do it's like Moana. And then the next part is like the butt part. So you want to have a surprising twist on yours. So what's something unique about it? So um, if you think about it, so you let's just use yours Game of Thrones here, Ethan. What is yours? Mm -hmm. Game of Thrones, but what's your unique spin that you want to include on Game of Thrones? It's different than yours. Something like that kind of stands out differently. I, I think the immortality part is is different. So you can't it's like die Game of in Thrones. This one. Yeah, yeah, you can't die. I like that. So so Quinn, your yours was you picked. What was your movie? It's like Moana, but what? But mm -mm. But they speak Spanish, and you're not allowed to bring people from other places yeah. unless they can, or unless they'll speak Spanish, and they won't speak any other. Language. Got it. So Quinn was talking about that hers like Moana, but there's this place you can't. No one new can come to this island. They're not allowed to like bring new people. So it's like Moana, mm -hmm. but kind of this place where you're not allowed to have outsiders join this place. So How do you spell new. New. Any. Yeah. Uh, N e w. JC, you like Hogwarts, so it's like Hogwarts, but what? Like the sort of twisting on it. So you come with something interesting and unique in it. So that's what we want to start with here. Our first one is it's like blank, but something special about it. So immort so it's like Game of Thrones, but immortality. You know, it's like Moana, but no new people are allowed to come to the island. As opposed to leaving the island, they don't allow people to come to the island in Moana in this one. Any other unique things or unique twists that you have on your world of Game of Thrones there? I, I think that maybe the creatures talking, you know, because I, I think they weren't like in Game of Thrones. I don't remember like dragons being able to speak or like have consciousness. Daddy, so. what's the title? So just call it world at the top. Yeah. It's called this world building. So that's the first real question here. Just to start with, you want to sort of be inspired by. And I think great sort of stories are always inspired by. There's a fun story about Hunger Games. And Hunger Games um, is kind of the story, if you've, if you've seen it or seen the movie, about kind of this competition. And the woman was sort of watching reality television and she saw what was going on in the Iraq war and kind of came up with this interesting place. So being inspired by things is good. So come up with your place that you're inspired by and then have a twist to it. So Moana, but people aren't allowed on the island. Uh, and then, you know, Game of Thrones, but there's immortality. Those are great oh, ones for sure. So um, so the next one we're going to talk about here a little bit is uh, we're going to, in, in these sort of worlds, you need some rules. So every great place, number two in this one, has rules. And so the first question that we're going to start with for everyone when you're thinking about this sort of world you've invented here is what is something on this world that's forbidden? What's something that's not allowed on this place behind it? So, Ethan, what's something in your world here that's not allowed? It's forbidden uh, that no one uh, sort of is, maybe is a little surprising or unique or some kind of rule that's forbidden. Um, I think there's like the thing that powers the whole world, like in um, Jakaria, 
like that is what gives people immortality so they're not allowed to mess with it like it's like a forbidden uh, zone so they're forbidden from messing with this sort of superpower force and so what you kind of already came up with yours a little quinn that the people are not allowed to come to come to the island who are outsiders also, right you're not allowed you, you're not allowed to build your house on land okay so you're not allowed to build your house on land and you're not allowed to outsiders are not allowed in the place <coughs> so make this on number two put number two so what they're forbidden from and great stories always have something that's forbidden right you think about harry potter you know kind of the muggles were forbidden from coming into this world you know there's always yeah, kind the of this forbidden, forbidden, forbidden from forbidden. right yeah yeah Encanto people from the outside were forbidden from coming into the Encanto and you were also forbidden from leaving. So there's something that's forbidden behind that one. Um, so the next thing that we want to know about is what's something that's kind of like, uh, what's something that's like a, a, a requirement or a tradition that's required. So something that kind of is important that you must do, like kind of a tradition or some kind of a celebration. Is there some sort of a big celebration that, or a sort of a tradition that happens in this place? So in, in your, you kind of, Game of Thrones like world? Is there some kind mm -hmm. of a tradition that celebrates yeah. some of these things behind it? Go to house. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think they they celebrate the ruling dragon, and so there's like a, maybe a dragon dance that that would be kind of like similar to Game of Thrones. I like it. I like Kate's. You're for, there's a there's an ability, but you're forbidden from using it. Right? Those are great kind of things. Like there's this power, but something forbids it. So Quinn, for you, what is uh, what's the tradition that happens on this island? Is there any kind of like a celebration or festival or something kind of like a way that we sort of these requirements and rules there um well Sometimes it's they always they always have a big pool party once a year to celebrate um to celebrate um to celebrate um the the that um no to celebrate um to celebrate um no one coming to the island Yes, yeah, celebrate, celebrate the day that nobody <laughs> that they made the rule that nobody could come. Got it. So that's the perfect thing. Are you celebration to like when this rule happened, and that's um, okay. sort of the good one. They celebrate that happening, celebrate. and then oftentimes there's something like you want to look back on okay. when that first happened. So what was the first moment that that all happened? So for you, Quinn, like what when did that originally happen back in the history of this island island place? When did they first forbid people from coming to the island? Do you, can you tell that story? Um, when, when, when some, when, um, when, when, um, somebody, um, when, when, um, somebody accidentally made their house, when somebody accidentally made their house on land, and, um, and, and, and the flood swept their house away. Got it. Okay. So that's good. So like. <laughs> You know, people were always are now forbidden from making houses on land because someone came outside and made houses and they flooded. Um, so that's a good example. Kind of there's some biblical things in that one, even, I think. So um, what about you, Ethan, this idea of kind of like this sort of when that origin happened of when this sort of first thing began? Yeah. Celebrate the dragon. Before the dragon be took power, like he had like two parents, like king and queen dragon that were in control. And so the wizards killed them. And so ever since that day... Or like the dragon that was left in charge, like you know, that's he like celebrates like the changing in power, I guess, like from like millennia like prior. Got it. So um, the first time that power changed is kind of when that began, where this sort of tradition began at that point. Yeah. yeah. And do you have the Bible be your inspiration? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> the Bible being your inspiration, like <laughs> you could, right? You certainly could. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I like it. I like it. That's great. So I see some good ones here, right? <clears throat> Leaving offerings, right? This idea of like kind of these cool things. Those are really interesting pieces behind it. Um, and again, feel free to put it in the chat. Whatever you're sort of thinking about here, these kind of key rules. So it's really important when you invent a world that you have to have kind of some of these, these rules. And so, you know, there's rules that are things that are forbidden and there's traditions that are really important and kind of have been around for a long time. So Ethan has this kind of dragon dance idea when you when the ritual dragon sort of comes into power and Quinn has this idea of the celebration of the lat when they like kick people off who are outsiders from it um, and so no more people into it and those kind of like interesting rules are really important in building um, a world you want to have certain really powerful rules um, behind it so um, so we have one last kind of like prompt that we're going to go through and then I think Ethan we're going to give away some some prizes is that right yeah! all right so we're going to do one more. 
and then we'll do that one. So the other thing that we want to do is we want to figure out is if you have a special location in there that kind of is a memorable one. So many places and things have this memorable locations and they're often if they're made into a movie, it's kind of on there. So you think about like in Ready Player One, this like video arcade is a great one or Harry Potter, you think about Diagon Alley, <coughs> the tree house and Magic Tree House, like the city center in Hunger Games. Tree house like and Magic Tree house. It's a neat one, right? Like the hidden cave in Moana and Antonio's room and Kanto, right? Those are all like special places. So um, I want all of you to think about what is a special location in another like sort of movie or book or television show that you like, something that you remember very well, a special bit, you know, location behind it. Um, and so let's share what your favorite ones are. So Quinn, is there something that you have? You want to start with a special location in another book or movie or TV show that you really um, like? Well, it's and it can't be the same movie as your your main inspiration. So it can't be from Moana. That's important well, too. Well, kind of like this cave in Mario Pony, up. and in there is like what <coughs> powers all the harmony, which is um, the tree of harmony, where the elements of harmony are, and Got it. they like protect everywhere and keep and the tree of harmony like keeps keeps everything growing healthy and well so it doesn't get overgrown or not grown enough perfect so that's a good example so quinn likes this idea of this cave with this tree in it this sort of magical tree cave uh which is great so we're going to like start with that and then we're going to talk about our twist on that one as well so ethan what's yours what's a sort of a non thing from game of thrones that you really like mm -hmm. Ooh, i like count olaf's house by the way that's a good one right there jc i like it uh what about you ethan you got one that you uh, think is interesting i was thinking of like the avengers tower being like this iconic like just in the middle of this you know new york city you have like this giant a and you know it's like the beacon of hope perfect so now what you want to do with this one is you want to take that place and you want to bring it into your world, but you make it unique a little bit. So for you, Ethan, you don't want to make Avengers Tower. You want to make this tower that fits into your world behind it. Or Quinn, you want to take this magical cave with a tree in it and fit it somewhere into your world or island. So how would you do that? How would you make it different than in that one, but you make it on your place? I'm going to make it a palm tree. Palm a tree, magic so. palm tree. I like with it. With magic coconuts. It's good. So is it going to be a cave or is it going to be kind of like a, could it be a cove or something like a little different? A cove. A cove with the magic palm tree. There we go. I like it. So put that one down. There's a special place. So someplace in this world, there's going to be this sort of special place that's this cove that has, that Quinn has, that you're going to sort of basically have this place from it. Ooh, I like Casita is a good one too. So Casita has a place in there. Atlantis from the Keeper of the Lost Cities. All these are really good ones, these unique places. So how would you make your castle or your Avengers Tower in uh, kind of more of the dragon you know, world, Ethan? I, I think instead of like a giant A, it'll be like a dragon skull. And it's going to be like Dragon Skull Mountain. And so that's going to be where they, you know, the leaders of the dragon leaders live. They could have secret meetings in there. Ooh, yeah. Good. It's a place idea. where they convene for their secret meetings. Maybe they that's where that the ritual takes place too, Ethan. The special mm. dragon ritual you talked about. Mm. Yeah. Hey, what was mine about? Yours was going to be it was a cove where there's a palm, like a kind of an enchanted palm tree of some sort. I like it. So the other thing that you want to do is oftentimes then you want to tie that special location to some what to one of the rules so there has to be one of these rules either a positive rule or an ant the negative rule you want to tie that special location so ethan you've got this sort of special rule where you know kind of this this sort of thing about immortality and sort of these things where you can't touch this sort of thing so how does that tie into the special location in one way so i think that the mountain is like the entrance to like a the source of power in that world and so they're like gatekeeping the entrance and the rule is that, like, no one's allowed in there except for, like, the leader dragon. Perfect. So, Quinn, what about you? So, take a look up here just a second. How does this cove with this enchanted palm tree tie into kind of the, the rule that nobody knew can come to the island? Is there anything kind of special about that kind of cove and that palm tree? Well, the palm tree, um, every time um, a baby, um, well, um, every time um, – Every time someone gets old enough, they drink the juice from that, and it gives them and and so um and they so they always speak Spanish, and um and somebody can track them if they're trying to speak a different language. Cool. Okay. So there's a special like there's a power in that like the coconut uh, water or something like that, right? That comes from that one. It's good. See, I see how these cool little connections happen. It's really interesting to see when you think about 
how it fits together. Like, and that's kind of what we did, Ethan. You pull from interesting things behind it, and suddenly your world has this like richness and this depth from like different things. Like you've got, you know, Avengers and Game of Thrones mm -hmm. and dragons. Like it kind of pulls stuff together in some cool ways. Right. I mean, the best stories have those like connections, right? So it's cool that you can be inspired by them. Yep. I love it. I love it. So here's the sort of summary a little bit of this one. So we got our first three parts here. So this is kind of what we want you to go do today. So we'll start with is we're going to talk about, again, what sort of the inspired world with this twist on it. So what is that kind of, you know, when you can explain it to someone, it's like Hogwarts, but in this case, you know, you write magic with a quill, not with a wand, or, you know, it's like Game of Thrones, but there's immortality or whatever it might be. So you want to think about that one. And then you want to figure out what are some of the key rules, what's forbidden, and also kind of what are the traditions that celebrate kind of the the other side of it where did the history happen and the last thing is we want to identify a special location something that's sort of different and unique behind it and that's really really important here so this kind of thing you have it so like i like kate's the pristine city that's a powerful special location that kind of you know again this is where all the magic um, sort of happens behind it mm -hmm. so that's what we're starting with we're starting with kind of our like these kind of things behind it all right so now what we're going to do next is we are going to start to talk about something very important when you're writing a story. And that is, we're going to talk about moments. And so now that you've got this special place that you've created here, you've got kind of this world you've got, you've got some rules in it, and you've got this special location behind it. We're going to brainstorm three special moments that are going to happen in this world. Now, this could be for the story or some other time, but we're going to do three of them today. And what I want you to be thinking about before you start is I want you to think about <laughs> I told you to think about fishy. I want you to think about a song in your head. So we're going to be thinking about the soundtrack that's going to be playing for this special moment. So I want you to think of kind of a moment of like funny, peppy, something funny or funky happens. I want you to think of the song that's playing in your head. Like kind of what could that be? It could be kind of like jazzy or peppy or kind of like, you know, bum, bum, ba, da, 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 whatever it is. What's your thing? So what's, can, can, you, can you hum the song that's kind of peppy that you got going in your head? It could be from another movie. You got something, Quinn? Fun, funny moment. Um, when she actually spills the, spills the coconut water on her head. All right, so you got kind of like, how'd the song go? So kind of hum it for me. Like, See, there you go. <laughs> All right, so everyone's got their kind of like song in the background. That's what we want to start with because we're going to think about a special moment where something fun or funny or hilarious happens. And so here's the first one. We're going to come up with a hilarious and crazy moment that happens in this place. So start with your theme song. And I want you to figure out when this happens. I want you to figure out a date and a location. And it could be in the special little place you brained or, some, or somewhere else. So Quinn, I want you to start here. Is your kind of hilarious moment going to happen in the cove or is it going to happen somewhere else in this island? Where's the place this hilarious thing is going to happen? Um, in, um, in the, in the cove. It's going to happen in the cove. All right. And when is this? Is this kind of happening like, you know, a long time ago? Is it going to be happening now? Like, when do you think it happens? Um, it happens, it happens, um, when she's supposed to be getting, putting, drinking it, she accidentally spills it on her head. All right, guys, so there you go. So, in, so their character in this one, she's in this cove and she spills coconut stuff. Uh, on her head that's a good one right there what about you ethan tell me something about this where 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 is this hilarious place thing going to happen in your funny world here uh so i'm going to focus on the hero now for the funny part um i think a funny part would be if the wizard was like lost and like in like a forest and then all of a sudden like he's like talking at to himself and then everyone else like starts to chime in and he's like what's going on like he's just like so confused and then it's like all of the lizards, because remember the lizards are like his friends. Mm -hmm. All the lizards are like laughing at him for being so silly and not understanding. So I think that would be a funny like, like introduction. So, so that's kind of, I can hear you can hear the music. Like you're just gonna all these people are talking around and you can sort of see that that visual behind it. Yeah, uh, I can hear that. You can hear that? You can hear it? So what what's what's the funny thing that happens in your world, Quinn? Give us some more details about when she spills the coconut. So this is supposed to be the special ceremony, and she now spills it on her head, is kind of what you're telling me? Yeah. So what happens? Like what's sort of the funny things that happen as a result of it? Do people get mad? Do they like freak out? Is there like like a big problem that happens? Like what happens once this funny moment happens? Um Mm, what? So, um, what? 
to what so it's called so we're gonna figure out when this funny thing happens what happens as a result of that we call it the called a beat in the writing world you want to talk about beats something beats, bad or something good it can be whatever so but just something happens next so what is that something good or um, bad happens next um it's like a cause and effect, right? Like yeah. The effect. We call it a story beat in the world of writing. So this is a beat is this beat causes momentum forward. So this happens and then or therefore kind of thing. Or but. Um, when, when she actually spills it on, it gives her, it gives her, it gives her um, a weird power. Cool. Perfect. That nobody else has. So that's a great one. So that's a good example of like this. And then therefore she gets this weird power. So this funny thing happens, it gets this weird power. And that's what's called a story beat. A beat is actually about how you advance things forward. So for you, Ethan, tell me this sort of thing here. You've got this kind of funny scene and he's hearing these voices and then what happens, right? I think then the, his best friend, Lizzie, um, sticks up for him to say like, let's not, you know, let's not be mean to a wizard anymore. And so that's how they become best friends is the, uh, you know, laugh track of all the lizards laughing like, haha, this wizard's so confused. But then Lizzie's the only one that sticks up for the lizard, feels bad for him. So then Perfect. they have like a stronger relationship. <laughs> so, Daddy, look at that one. <laughs> I like, Drench is the main leader in Fruit Punch. I like it. It's good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> so those are these good things because these kind of funny, awkward moments are where things happen. So you think about like, you know, in Encanto, right? You have these funny moments where like, you know, Something's happened. Those are like where things are really good to happen. So something funny happens and then happens. And that's, again, when you talk about this, it's called a story beat. And beats are these ways that you have something called therefore or but. So you should say something happened yeah. and therefore or but or whatever it is. So get pushed in the pool is a great one, right? So that's the funny moment. And then or therefore kind of what happens next. So we've got this cool power that happens as a result of this kind of funny moment where coconut water falls on, uh, on Quinn's uh, character's head. Those are great ones. We've got uh, oh, we got all kinds of good ones here. I like it. I like the ones where 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 um, um where they get smacked on their. <laughs> Quinn likes people getting injured. That's a that's a good one for sure. <clears throat> so those are good ones. Uh, we like these ones. Anyone getting drenched or you punched in the face? Uh, those ones. Those are all good ones. <laughs> so good. Punched in the face. Everyone seems to get injured. So that's the first moment. When I think of a moment like that, and again, we call this kind of the, the the comedy beat. So something happens, and then it sort of prompts something else. And that's what, again, you got these pieces there are really good, you know, kind of like sort of momentum pieces. So you imagine this preppy music, something funny happens. But then after that thing, again, something happens as a result of it, which is great. All right. So our next one we're going to be talking about, this is something a little more serious. So before we do it, I want you to think of kind of an ominous sound, kind of like a you know, like a kind of like spooky music a little bit here. You got something that's kind of a little bit like scary or intimidate or challenging behind it. Uh, you know, you can think about that. You know, the moment in, in Encanto, for those of you in Encanto, when he goes, she goes inside Bruno's kind of like castle to climb those things behind it. You hear that kind of like ominous sound. Sing, what do you think? What would you come some sounds or some music if you have an ominous part for us, Quinn, in your what story? Ominous, mean? ominous means like kind of scary or spooky or kind of like, you know, potentially just bad. Mm. That's good. I like it. Mm. Yeah. Ethan, what about you? You got a kind of a m music in your head for this ominous point? I was thinking of like Jaws. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. There you go. That's what I was thinking. You were. Kinda. That's good. So that's really good. So <laughs> now that you got the soundtrack in your head, the next step is I want you to, is I want you to think something happens. So I want you to figure out where they are now. So where are these people behind it? And I want you to figure out what happened. And it's going to be something that's like a struggle or an obstacle or a battle or something that happens behind it. So that music's playing. And I want you to think about where is your character, Quinn, and kind of what do they stumble into that causes some kind of like fear or scariness or struggle? So where is your character and what does she run into that causes her to feel uncomfortable? She's, um, she, well, um, you're not supposed to go into the magic cave without, without, without. The cove or the cave? Is there also a, co the a cave? cove? Okay, the cove. cove. I'm not supposed to go in the magic cove without, without somebody helping, without somebody with you. And she went by herself. Got it. And when she gets in there, what sort of like, does she, is she afraid? Does she see something she shouldn't? Um, is there a bad guy there? She um she peeks in and she she, she and she sees um 
sees that the tree is alive and she gets kind of spooked out. Perfect. So that's good. So that's a good example of that one here. So what about you, Ethan? What sort of uh, the ominous thing happens and what stumbles into those uh, those pieces? I think the wizard is going on like a quest and on the quest, he stumbles into this murky area that's like this fog and doesn't really know what to expect. And then he sees like dragon eyes like glaring in the distance. Ooh. And it's like red, like like so you see the red and like the darkness. And he's like scared and doesn't know like what's gonna happen. I think I think that's like I like scene. it. I can see these sort of dragon eyes going. I like Kate's too, this sort of like re I can almost see like sparks coming, fire sparks coming out of your character's fingers, these kind of these powerful things. Like that's sort of a again, that kind of moment. And so so once you have that moment, that ominous thing, then there's always got to be a therefore. Something happens next. So now that we've got this sort of special place here that we've got here. So Quinn, you've got your character who stumbles in and sees that the tree is alive or is glowing or something. Then what happens? What's the next thing that happens? So that causes what to happen? Do you know what it is yet? What happens to her? Um, the tree sees her and starts talking to her. Oh, good. So the tree starts to talk to her. That's perfect. So once you see that, then this like next thing happens. So that's the therefore, right? Then the tree sees her. She didn't know it could talk and it starts to talk to her. So that's great. Uh, Ethan, what about you? So now that we've got this kind of this moment, the dragon eye staring, then what happens? Therefore. The dragons don't see him, but they start talking and he learns about the dragon's plan, uh -huh. which is like, you know, to have the immortality be only for like the lead dragon. And so now he knows what he has to stop because he overhears their plans. Perfect. So that's another great example. This idea here of like those ones. I like Kate's got another good one here. This vision then happens. So once this flame thing happens and people, you know, Daddy, shun how do you. you say, spell talk? T L T A L K. But you can just spell it however. We're all good, you know. We're all friends here. Okay. Lots of I spell things lots. My my editor said I used a lot of uh <laughs> sort of, I didn't use enough Oxford commas, so don't worry. <laughs> we all have our problems. <laughs> that's what autocorrects for Quinn. Exactly, exactly. All right. So now we've got we've got some really really good pieces here. So we've got a funny moment that's caused something, and we've got kind of this ominous moment. Now we need to think about this moment that we call the triumph moment. Why so do I want you keep using big words. Why do I use big words? The triumph moment. It's kind of like I know. I, I guess I do. You, you're good. Good for calling me out. High five for you for calling me out. Should we show? We got to show everyone something. We do something now. We we do something called the plumes high five. You want to show them the plumes high five, everyone? Yeah. So you know this is the plume sign for everyone who's read the book. This is the plume sign. The P with the kind of three things out now we do something else kind of cool here now is when you want to sort of see another plumes person you do this one and then what do you do quinn plumes high five put it up and then high five yep there you go i'm gonna high five ethan there you go ethan right. give us a plumes, plumes high five high high five. five there you go perfect <laughs> that's the plumes <laughs> high five so plumes high five so when you meet another plumes person i saw you jake there we go plumes high five to jake over here we'll get him over there perfect love it love it um, I think we do selfies with JC. We'll get you over five. here. Ready? Plume yeah. side five for JC. We'll get JC. There we go. All right. Um, all right. So the last one we're gonna do is something. It's kind of a, a big moment here. This is the big moment where there's kind of this like something really, really epic happens in what and whatever this is. So um, we want you to think about what that moment is. I want you to think of something where it's kind of like a big sort of celebration. Like there's a party going on, or there's some kind of like a. A, a victory or there's a celebration i want you to think of that kind of music so what's the music going on when there's kind of this big moment happening can you hear the you play the music for us that you hear in the soundtrack good that's a good sort of like it's like a kind of a you can see the people entering in i like it. ethan what about you, you got any kind of like music that you can hear for this this moment it's gonna be hard to hum it, <laughs> but I think like Harry Potter, like Goblet of Fire, like he just wins like one of the Tri Wizard tournaments, and so they have like this like big trumpet, like do 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 do, like that. Like, I like that the horn right there. It's, a, it's good work. Ethan, Ethan's got a. <laughs> it's good. All right, so I want you to keep that in the back of your mind here. That is going to be the one we're gonna do. Is we're gonna have we call it a triumph or spectacle moment. We want to imagine that triumphant move music there behind it. And we want to think about what is the big event that's going on behind it? Something's happening. So Quinn, what is this big, important moment that's happening right now? That's kind of like the climax, the top pullman of what's going on in this island kingdom here that's happening. What is the big, big moment where everyone's there? Everyone's, you know, 
at the top of their game. What's happening? Mm, um, Could it be that ritual moment where they kind of like celebrate no one else being on the island? Mm-hmm. And so the crazy power is when she touches water, something um, she t- she turns into a mermaid. So that's good. So that would be your therefore. So you've got this moment where they're having this ritual. And then at that, therefore, at that point, she touches the water and she appears to a mermaid in front of yeah. all these people. Touches. So that's kind of the thing. You have this big mm-hmm. spectacle and then something mm-hmm. happens as a result of that. Her power gets revealed where she turns into a mermaid in front of yeah. everyone. So that's perfect. A great kind of one here. The moment is this ritual touches the water and becomes a mermaid. JC's got a mermaid up there for you too. You can see it by the way. She did a mermaid for you. <laughs> so good work, JC. Uh, all right, Ethan, what is your kind of big triumphant spectacle moment that happens? I think that power that was only for the dragon leader, like that gets destroyed. And so it becomes like this power that spreads throughout the whole world. And so it's the music is in tandem with everyone you know, having immortality and like living forever and like, like a happy ever after ending. And what's the, and so that kind of, what's the there? So then that happens. Is there kind of the therefore then after that? What's then that was that cause? Therefore the wizard gets to, you know, live with his family in peace forever, no longer having to fight like for his life. I like it. All right. So this spectacle moment kind of leaves him into that next point behind it. What else? What are the other kind of like big triumphant moments do we hear? Anyone anyone else have any good ones out there? I'm kind of, Kate's been having a good one. So, (laughs) so I got to hear, we got to hear Kate's game here, right? All right. We got, let's see. All right. So, so that's kind of what we've got here. So now what we've done today is we've kind of come up with this world where we sort of can, you know, be inspired by it's kind of like this one, but our twist on it. We've got some rules, some positive rules and some negative rules. And then we've kind of got this idea of the special place in it. And we talked about these kind of key moments. This is how you create a world. And so now there's so many different things we could do behind it. We've got this triumphant moment. We've got this sort of funny moment. Quinn, what else do we got here? Um, well, I was just going to say, in writer's workshop at my school, we have this saying, we use um, it, it, it's kind of the we use um a seed a, a, a um a seed moment for each little part, and the entire thing is a watermelon. So a little seed moment for each different scene. That is or, or part. High five on that one. Plume's high five on that one. Even there you oh, go. Wait, That's perfect. Oh, wait. <laughs> there you go. High five. I like it. That's awesome. That is so good. I love that one. So. Uh, this idea here of like kind of these, these are exactly that, as Quinn said, they're the seed moments, all these little pieces here behind it. And they kind of fit into this much broader story, which is, uh, which is awesome. The watermelon. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming, Ethan. Thank you for being the host with the most as always. These have been super duper fun. And uh, we put all the recordings up on the YouTube channel too. There's a Penny Moore's YouTube channel. 